All right, so remember, what we're talking about is our domain and range. Domain is going to be all of our values that are going to be a part of our function. So what I want to do is I want to look at this graph, and what I want you to do is tell me, look at the x values that are a part of, the, of those relations. So when depending the domain and range, all right, what we do is we first want to look and determine, let's look at the x values, right? Domain represents all of our x values that are a part of our function. So here's our little graph. And let's look at the negative values. Are there any negative x values that make up this graph, right? This shaped little graph, are there any x values? And you could say, no. So what is the smallest x value that is a part of this graph? You could say it's going to be positive one. That's the farthest, this, that's this only x value, the smallest x value that's a, that makes up or that is a part of this graph. Then we look at the largest value, and the largest value is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you can say my domain is, be, is going to be between 1 and 6. Now at 1, the graph goes through 1, so it's we say that 1 is a part of it. So we say that all x values have to be greater than or they can be equal to 1. However, at 6, we see we have an open circle, meaning at 6, it does not contain the value 6. So therefore, it only has to be all the x Teachers, values. Teachers, please come vote for the Teacher of the Year today in the main Not office before 245. Right? Again, please come and vote for the Teacher of the Year today in the main office before 245. Thank you. So then what we have is x now has to be less than 6. It can't be less than or equal to because 6 is not a part of it. So now the next thing we look at is our range. And we say, all right, remember the range is going to be the range now of our y value. So we look at what is the negative y value. Well, we go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Negative 4 is not a part of the graph. So the farthest y value is I have negative 3. And the largest y value is 1, 2, 3, 4. So that means my y values, all my y values that make up this graph are between negative 3 and 4. Make sense? So, what we look at here now is, remember at negative 3 I have this open circle. So therefore it's just going to be less than 3. However, at 4 I have a solid dot and it also goes through it. So we could say it's going to be y has to be greater than negative 3 but less than or equal to 4. Now the next thing is I lost that so I'm going to go back and check it. Remember that to determine if a relation is a function or if a graph is a function, what we need to do is we're going to use the vertical line test because remember the definition of a function is for every x value we need to have a unique y value. Hold on a second, I need to plug in the thing. I am having like some serious issues. So, alright, sorry about that. So now, uh, I forgot to plug in the power source, and my battery was dying, all right? Sorry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the vertical line test, because what the vertical line test was, tells me is that every x value, let's pick the x value 1, how many y values do I have? Well, I have two y values. I have 1, you could say, like 1 comma negative 3, and 1 comma positive 3, right? There's two points when x equals 1. Therefore, this is not a function. All right. Now let's take a look at the next one. The next one is our domain. Again, we want to determine what are the x values that make up our graph. How far left do we go? So we say, are there any negative x values that are part of this graph? You can say, oh yeah, right here. I don't even know what they are, but yeah, I know they're negative. And then we want to say, well, this graph has an arrow. Instead of a dot, it has an arrow. And that arrow tells us you're going to have infinite length, meaning this is going to go into infinity up and to the left. So that means as far as I go here, even when I get all the way out, my graph is going to continue in that direction. So my domain is going to be from negative infinity. And then how far is it going to go to the right? The same thing, to positive infinity, right? Because to the right, they're both going to infinity, but in the right is the positive direction, left is the negative direction. So therefore, my x values, right, because your domain represents your x values, is going to be between negative infinity and positive infinity. Now we look at our range. Again, our range is our y value. So we say, do we have any negative values? No. So your range, you cannot have any negative values in your range. So where is the smallest value in my range? It's at 0, right? At 0, I have a y coordinate. So I'd say 0. 
then the largest, well, these arrows go up into positive infinity. So they're going to go up to infinity. So remember, range, though, we're dealing with the y values. Now, since my graph connects at y, 0 is going to be less than or equal, or y is going to be less than, greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you find the domain and range of a graph. And then we need to determine, is this a function? Well, you guys can look, vertical line test. If you take a vertical line and go across, what you'll notice is that every x value, I have uniquely one y coordinate. So therefore, this is a function. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.